Let's read the B part of this question. Just to refresh your memory again, it's 120,000 Rand loan over four years at 12%. The first part, find X. You remember that is now the 3,160 Rand and 6 cents. So that part we've got, 3160 and 06. So we know what the monthly payments are. Now they ask us the following question. Calculate the outstanding balance after the 20th payment has been made. Now that is very important. How many payments? She's made 20 payments. Now she wants to know what the outstanding balance is. Let's discuss that. In the A part, they ask us to find the monthly payment. Now, as you can see, I've put that monthly payment now on our timeline. And that is the 3,160 Rand and 6 cents. Now, she's going to make these payments over a period of four years. Then the, the loan is paid off. But let's say T20. You see, it doesn't really now look nice on our timeline because it doesn't look like it fits there, but just for, for argument's sake. Let's just say T20 is over here. She now made payments. The loan was granted at T0. She made these monthly payments at T1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right up to here, she made these monthly payments of 3,160. Right up to this point, she made it. So that means she made 20 payments of this amount. Now, after she paid that amount, Maybe she was lucky to inherit money or to win the lotto or maybe someone gave her or maybe she received a bonus at her, at her work. And now she wants to pay off the loan at once. So she don't want to make these payments anymore. So you will agree with me there are still 28 payments left here over this period. But she don't want to make those payments anymore. She wants, after she made this 20th payment, she asked the bank, what do I still owe you? Now, the confusion is that many people think, OK, she still owes 28 payments of that amount. And they multiply the two, and they say, this is what she still owes, which in a way is true. That is still what is outstanding on the loan. But that is the outstanding balance of the loan if she's going to continue with the payments. That is, she just wants to know what I still owe them. But what she really wants to know here is, what is the balance outstanding here? So that means if I want to pay off the loan today, what must I pay? And if you pay the bank the, this 3,000 rand, 160 times the 28, then you make the payments including the interest. But if you pay it all today, those interest must be removed. Remember, all those payments include interest. And now we must basically remove those interest because you're going to pay all the money at, at one moment in time. So how do we go about finding this balance outstanding? In the banking industry, they also refer to it as a settlement amount or a settlement figure. You want to settle your loan or your bond. What must you still pay? Now, how do we find it? First of all, when you go to the bank and say, I want to settle this loan of mine, they will, they will not really physically do it because these things are calculated on a computer. But just to understand what happens here is they will say, you've made 20 payments to us of this amount. And we want to know what, what are those 20 payments, these 20 payments, uh, what are they worth? Because that is the money you pay to us. So every month for 20 months, you've made these payments. What are they worth here? Now, if I've made payments monthly and I want to know what, what is the value there, you agree with me that's a future value. So we're going to calculate the future value for those 20 payments. But then what else are we supposed to do? 
The bank is going to say, this 120,000 that we gave you, we wanted that back with the interest of 48 months. But now you're only going to pay us interest for 20 months on it. So what they're going to do is, they're going to take that once-off amount, that 120,000, and they want to know what is that amount worth after 20 months. And do you hear compound interest? So it is that compound interest, that whole loan, for 20 months, what will it be worth? That is what the bank want from you. Because they gave you this loan now, not for 48, but for 20 months. So what is this loan worth after 20 months? And then we're going to subtract the two answers. So let's start to write this down. So to find this, and I'm going to call it B for balance, so not to confuse it with present and future value, we want to, a balance outstanding here. So how do I find it? I'm first going to work out the compound interest on the loan. So that compound interest is P1 plus I to the N, and we're going to substitute now. So I'm going to work out compound interest on that amount for 20 months. From that, I'm going to subtract the money Sandy paid. What did she pay? 3160 and 6 cents for 20 months. And you agree with me, that is future value. And my future value formula, of course, is X, 1 plus I to the N minus 1 over I. So I'm going to work out compound interest for the 20 months on the loan, the payments for 20 months. So let's substitute now. Remember, our interest, 12% compounded monthly. So what was the amount that, was, that we invest here? That is the loan amount, 120,000 times by 1 plus 0 0.12 over 12. And I think you're all familiar why we do it. You take the interest rate, divide by 100, divide by months, 12 months, because it's monthly compounding. How many months will this money be invested now for that 20 month period? So that exponent is 20. Subtract the future value. We want x, that is my monthly payment. That is what we calculated in the A part of the question. And that is 3160. Please take note that you put the whole amount in. Then we say 1 plus i, 0, 0,12 over 12. For how many months? How many payments? Remember future value? We started at 1 up to 20. So there will be 20 payments minus 1 over my i. And there we've done the substitution. So I gave you the formulas that I'm going to use to find this outstanding balance. So the formulas again is my compound interest for the period that she paid minus the future value for the period that she paid. And now we're going to subtract the two. So let's now take our calculators and let's work it out all at once. Let's do it. I want you to try with me and let's see if we get the same answer. The first part, not very difficult to work out. It's 120, one, two, three zeros, times by that bracket of 1 plus 0 0.12, denominator of 12. Close the bracket and we raise it to the exponent of 20. Now, I'm going to push equal on my calculator. Uh, you may write it down if you want to, or you can just leave it on your calculator. And now I'm going to say minus, minus, and then I open up a fraction like we've done so many times before. And I'm going to put this onto my calculator. So first of all, the 3160.06 times by my bra double bracket, 1 plus 0.12, the 12 denominator, close the bracket, exponent of 20, minus 1, very important, that last bracket, many people forget to put that in, and then your answer is an error and you don't understand why. With your arrow key to the denominator, 0.12 over the 12 and 
uh, let me just, 0 0.12 over the 12 is equal to, and my answer for this one, please check with me if you agree, it is 768.41,43 cents because the third decimal is 1. So I'm not going to write it down. It doesn't affect the first two decimals. So 76,841 rand and 43 cents. So that is what she needs to pay right here so that the loan is paid up. Now, that is what uh, balance outstanding is all about.